Quarter of quarter. <laughs> Thank you. According to my stream, we are live. So welcome to the newest episode of Hashtag Cocktails, the manly show on the internet today with a twist because I have an all-female panel. They like to call themselves the Vagtastic Chikoritas. So I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves, starting from my farthest left, which is Jesse. Hey yo! I have a mustache. Well, th well you take the mustache off. I just took mine. No. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. So I'm Jesse. Um, you might know me as a glasses or as crispy scream or as a whole bunch of other names on the internet. Um, right now I have a YouTube channel called Fifty Shades of Fandom. And I'm a big geek about everything, and I'm in grad school. Yay! That's me. Quarter <laughs> Thank you. According to my stream, we are live, so welcome to the newest episode. We've got of the stream the open, guys. We've got the stream open. I don't. There. I did. Sorry, that was me. I had to refresh, and I forgot to mute it. I can make my mustache get bigger and smaller. <laughs> okay, Kristen, would you like to introduce yourself? I got the power! Wait, me? You go, yeah. <laughs> oh, me, alright. Um, hi, I'm Kristen Brumley. I am from uh, Stay in Character, which is a blog on LARPing.org, uh, and it's all about LARPing! All right. And I'm also the producer of the web series Basic Adventuring 101, so, which is also about LARPing. It seems to be my thing. <laughs> Very nice. Lauren? Um, I'm Lauren. I am Geek Girl of Mars on Twitter, and I have a YouTube channel, but I haven't updated it in months because crazy life stuff. Um, New Year, though. Resolution. I'm going to update once a week. <laughs> and Is last but not least, Mo. Okay. Hi. I'm Momo. Um, I was born in the belly of a volcano. My mother was an owl. And my father was the god of hunt and Wolves. I'm a vlogger. Um, I'm also the chosen one, but we're here to talk about vlogging and stuff today. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, and I'm your host, Don Diego. Uh, as usual, cocktails is about the experience, etiquette, and eccentricities of being a man, and in this case, of being a woman. What I like to do is when I have new people on, is I ask them this question: When did you consider yourself a woman or an adult? Jesse, go first. Oh, why me? Ah, um, I actually I thought about this. Um, I realized the two for me were kind of separate. So like I I realized I felt that I was a woman before I felt that I was an adult. Um, so like I felt like I was a woman. I and I'm still like not totally mature, but I felt that when I was sort of halfway through university on my own kind of thing. So I didn't feel completely independent adult-wise, but I felt like I was not a girl anymore. And then I felt like I was an adult, like, just in the past couple of months. Because I'm, I'm 23, right? So I just started doing grad school. So that was really what helped me sort of realize, like, yeah, I'm a grown-up. I'm almost done school. I have to get a career. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> I think it's you. Me. All right, cool. <laughs> um, I, I had a similar thought, actually. Uh, I think I started thinking that I was a woman. I was a very serious uh, child, by the way, and I thought about serious things. I don't know, maybe I'm just old soul. But uh, I think I was 10, and my best friend growing up was a guy, and he didn't want to hang out with me anymore because I was a girl. <laughs> like, I'm a girl! Oh my goodness! And so, like, it's this whole, like, realization that I'm different. Um, so, I mean... And I mean, I was still a tomboy, but that was that was the first realization. And then you know, puberty happens, and you can't deny it anymore. <laughs> but uh, and then as far as an adult, I don't think I've uh, I am 25. I'm turning 26 in January, and I don't think I've ever really thought of myself as an adult. I'm kind of holding on to childhood with like two hands and like kicking and screaming. Um, I mean, I I have bill payments. I've been through grad school and all that jazz, but Adulthood is kind of silly. <laughs> so. Very nice. Lauren or Mo? <laughs> um, Lauren, you go. Okay, uh, well, I um, I don't know how I felt about being an adult versus a woman, because I had cancer when I was five years old, so what happened was I grew up really quickly, 
and everyone treated me like I was an adult even when I was five. So I don't know when it's like officialized and like I'm an adult. I still feel like people say I'm an adult and they feel like I'm a kid. I'm 23 right now. So I really I don't have an answer for that actually. Last but not least. Okay, well, um, I think I realized I was a girl when I emerged from the room with tits. I feel, I feel like that's uh, step number one. Um, as for woman, uh, I'm like, I'm alternating back and forth right now. It's my I ideology that an adult is when you stop making excuses and you start making changes. So whenever I'm like, yeah, I took responsibility, I feel like a grown woman, but I'm like, yeah, I really want to jump on that pogo stick. That's when I feel like a kid. <laughs> and whatever. It's all like a state of mind anyway, so I don't think it really matters. I think there's a difference between being childish and being childlike, right? <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think that's one of the big things for me too. Is like I nowadays, like I love Harry Potter. I love the things my parents are like, Ooh, "You're like a kid," and I'm like, "Okay, I'm like, well, I didn't like when I was a kid because everyone's like being like an adult. I didn't get to like feel my age." So I'm and well, Harry, Potter, Harry Potter is different though because it's like it grew with us almost. Yeah, I don't know. Exactly. I'm like I'm the youngest one on here, but yeah, I'm just. Well, we're still wrong. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's very party girls, but like even like sometimes like Disney, like I started buying Disney DVDs one day. My parents were, my parents saw them coming into the house and they were like, what is with you? Why are you aggressing? No, Disney never gets old. Never. never. It's like, it's ageless. I agree. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, Incredibles is probably still one of my favorite animated films at all time. And like they <laughs> set it up for a sequel and we still have not received a sequel. I'm oh like, I'm kind of upset about that. The baby. What? No, but like at the end, they're like, oh, the mold anator. Yeah. <laughs> his name. Oh, it was like, and they're oh, now they're we're, they're this whole like super family, and they're all working together. But there's no sequel. <laughs> Whatever. Oh. But we got a finding Dory. So. Yeah, I'm so excited about that, Ellen. Ellen is I feel like awesome. Ellen is more excited than any of us. <laughs> I think so too. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, before we head up into any of our topics or anything at all, apparently Jesse and Mo are working together on a surprise for us. I'm and, so excited. Uh, now, to... I'm going to focus now on Mo and let her take over. Oh, my! Oh, so much pressure. Okay, uh, well, Jesse, also known as Krispy Kreme, also known as Fifty Shades of Fandom, is amazing, and she wrote a little parody song for you guys. And I was like, yo, we're all hanging out on Google Plus, yo. I should perform it, yo. And she was like, yo. And I was like, yo. And so this is happening. Okay. I'm so excited. You have no idea. <laughs> Wait a minute. I gotta get the lyrics right. Okay. Okay. Wait, I wrote this like two days ago. So. Never seen a Mewtwo in the flesh. Earn my XP completing tests in the trainer school, and I'm aware that my dress in pallet towns, not much to envy. But every chance like can dark Gyarados, oh, Dragonite, Houndoom, Blastoise, Plygon, Togas, Vapor, we don't care. We're riding bikes and doors in our dreams, but every master's like hyper potion, max relief, full heal, rare candies, coin piece, card keys, versions on a gold leash, we don't care. We are caught up in your deck's affair, and we'll never be rivals. It's all come from our boss, those lucky eggs are safe for us. We don't use electric bikes, just to use the NPC. Like a male cold bean, play your ass play. I won't steal your XP. My friends have all found the sergeant oil. Search and see foam every day for that birdie. And all their rivals named you know. That's how it is. You suck at poopy. But every prop's like mud kip, toted out, chicorita, bubble sore, chest pain, torchic, Pikachu, Charmander, we don't care. 
All our friends have safaris, but every leader's like a cascade of thunder. Coralax, see Ruby, HM's cool attack, really sweet stat increase, we don't care. We are caught up in your badge affair, and we'll never be rivals. It's all come from our boss, those lucky eggs to save the rice. We don't use electric buds, just to use the NPC. Like a milk will be their ass way. I won't steal your XP. Ditto. Ditto. Oh, once I saw a world of dreams, and almost got a bit of queen. Ditto. Ditto. Oh, can't place her into daycare. So tell she that just ain't fair. And we'll never be rivals. It's all come from our boss. Those lucky eggs just ain't for us. We don't use electric buzz, just a useless NPC. Like a male cone bean, clear I swear. I won't steal your XP. <laughs> I'll post the links to the lyrics in the chat, and I'll put them on my Twitter for oh, people who are perfect. watching. Perfect. Um, I'm so excited. Oh, no, you're amazing. So yeah, so basically what You're happened, amazing. What happened was I got that idea at like 11 p.m., and I was like, I'm going to write a Pokemon parody of Royals. And I, did and I saw it on your vlog. You mentioned it on your vlog, yeah. and I'm like, that's so cool. Yeah, so I did the first half, and then Mo was like, hey, I, I saw that you can't because I can't sing. Oh, like I'm terrible. So Mo was like, hey, I can sing, maybe we can do it together. And I was like, yeah, like, yeah. And then she said, oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> Thank you for letting me sing it. I've never done any parody songwriting before, so I was like, I hope this is good. I it was good. It. it was very good. Yeah, that yeah. was fantastic. So uh, either put that on your Twitter or send it to me, and I'll put it in the yeah. link. Uh, that was fantastic, and I guess it's actually a great segue into our first topic, which is spirit animals or spirit Pokemon. Uh, I want to ask everybody what their favorite spirit animal or spirit Pokemon is, so take it away. Anybody want to go first? Me! Okay. Um, I, I knew immediately who it would be, and that would be Eevee. Oh! <laughs> why? Why? There's, there's so much potential in Eevee. Like, you're just like... Look at look at little Eevee. First of all, adorable, cute as a button. Uh, and then second of all, uh, I mean, he could be anything. I mean, it's like you get the right stone, and you know, Jolteon, which would be like my second choice. I usually went with Jolteon, but like the Porygon. I mean, there's just like all these things. And I so, like the new Kawaii one. What's the one with the bow? What's oh yeah, one Lilia. of the new ones. The, the, the brand new one. What's the one? Jolteon, right? I knew that. Did you get it? Is you have to play with your Pokemon enough, and when it loves you, it changes. I don't have X Y. There's just another reason I, I got to play. get. This I bought a 3DS just for the new Pokemon <laughs> game. That's what like, I was thinking about doing. I was like, I, I'm gonna have to. Do it. It's so worth it's it. It's worth it. The best Pokemon game ever, and it's good for like if you if you're a fan of the old games. There's lots of stuff that happens where you'll be like, I remember. Like there's a Snorlax on a bridge. And you'll be like, I remember this, but then there are like improvements, and you'll be like, I'm so glad that I can do this. Like you can run inside of people's houses, and you can like bike through stuff. Anyway, it's a great game. I just play Pearl and pretend it's XY. Well, it's not. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're so sad. Okay, who's going next? All right, yeah, next. <laughs> if nobody has it, I'll go next. Uh, I, I mean, I've got one. If nobody, you go and go. Well. All right. Uh, I was I was debating this earlier, and I figured, you know, since uh, I did I did the a cover of What Does the Fox Say, and I was a big fan <laughs> of the game. I I did. It's on my channel. Don't worry about it. It was for it. charity. I'm a nice guy. It's all good. Anyway, so I loved the game Okami on the PlayStation 2, and I was a Japanese mythology fan as well as learned Japanese. So I have to go with Fox. And if I had to pick a Pokemon, it would be Nine Tails. So. Ah. Oh, that's a good one. Have you seen the new? And plus, friggin' Vulpix, just the cutest friggin'. I just want. Ugh. Seriously. 
Oh. I mean, between Vulpix and Ninetales, I'm like, Ninetales is a little more badass, though. Right, right, right. Yeah. A little bit. With Yeah, with Ninetales. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I feel like like what, one of you should be Vulpix, because you're adorable and cute and hot to trot, but you can, you can fuck shit up. <laughs> Just bleh. Bleh. So, what were you asking, Jesse? Oh, no, I was going to say, do, have you seen the new um, Fennekin, which is one of the new starter Pokemon? It's a fox, too. And it yes, evolves. It the, so the, the story behind the new starter trio is that they're based off of RPG classes, which if you're a nerd, you might like this, so you should check it out. Um, so the fire type is a fox, and it uh, evolves into a fire psychic type, called, um, and it's like a caster class. The grass one evolves into a grass and fighting type, it's a paladin, and the water type evolves into a water and dark type, and it's like a rogue slash assassin. assassin. What? And they're, yeah, it's cool because there's a double, there's a double, um, like, type cycle, so there's the fire, water, grass, but there's also the psychic fighting dark, and they're really cool designed, and they're amazing. And I, I got the paladin because I'm a tank! Whenever, <laughs> I, whenever I play MMOs, I play, like, a, a gigantic man. Named Wally. <laughs> awesome. Oh my god. But Anybody back else? to the point. Back um, to the thing. Yeah. Who's so next? I'll go next, maybe. Okay. Um, so for my spirit animal, I thought about this before. I want it to be like a peregrine falcon or a hawk, because they're awesome, but it would actually be a chickadee, because they're small and puffy, and I love puffy fat birds. And I actually <laughs> one day want to get a chickadee tattoo. We'll see. Um, but I think for spirit Pokemon... I don't know. Chikorita? Probably? I don't know. Chikorita. Spirit Pokemon is hard, because I love all the Pokemon. Maybe a Hophip. Hophip! Because it's like this. <laughs> it does the thing! <laughs> yeah, like... It's always moving around, and it's... I don't know. I like Hophip. That's my answer. Okay. Lauren? All right. So I was just going to say Eevee, too, Kristen. Oh, I want to say well, we're automatic friends. What do you know? <laughs> um, yes, my spirit animal, on the other hand, though, is um, a wolf. Ooh. Nice. Yes. Nice. Mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mo, Mo, did you say yours, by the way? I haven't said mine yet. Okay. Um. Pressure's on. What? The pressure is on. Ooh. Okay, um, I would probably be a Magikarp. Yes! <laughs> there's no, a lot of potential right. in that magic they're, curve. <laughs> they're, goof, they're goofy as all hell, and they're completely useless, and hilarious, and adorable sometimes. But watch out. Because you know what a magic carp evolves into? Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go down my bats. If you haven't listened to TM37 by Shofu, it's a rap song, and you should check it out, because there's a great line about Gyarados in that song. TM thirty seven or is it no nine eighty seven? I'll t I'll look it up. Yeah, TM eighty seven. I was actually gonna ask about Jens this. and your rock yeah. music. It's TM eighty seven because that's the TM for Swagger, <laughs> and that's the song. Yo, I got Swagger. <laughs> <laughs> I actually listen to a lot of rap music in my spare time, if you can tell. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Off topic. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. I, I, I got I to gotta get this train back on. All right. I, I'm going to segue this. Oh. I, I noticed that both you ladies mentioned uh, Eevees, and I, I think Eevee is kind of the choice for a lot of people because of all the uh, abilities to go and like, oh, you can go this way, that way, all this, uh, all those options and choices, and you can – and I wanted to tie that into like – being a kid and wanting to be something other than yourself and dressing up and uh, using your imagination and LARPing. There we go. Roundabout way. <laughs> we happen to have some LARPers on here. So uh, I'm going to out the LARPers and let you guys talk about what got you into LARPing. Yeah, that was a high five. Thank you. I can't okay, wait, 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 wait. One, two, three. <laughs> okay. Uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> LARPing. LARPing, all right. I, I, I think Miss Stay in Character should take the reins here, because I'm like, I'm, I'm a noob, and I'm not really a good LARP ambassador. Quite Like, I'm like Jar Jar Binks, and she's like Padme when it comes to LARP ambassador right now. Padme? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm going to die. 
<laughs> Giving birth to twins. Um, <laughs> uh, so LARPing, I mean, there's a lot that we could talk about in terms of uh, the LARPing topic, but I think the, the biggest thing about it is that it's an extremely geeky thing to do. It's like, but it's also a very rewarding thing to do, and um, I think right, right now one of my biggest uh, goals, things that I'm pushing for through my web series and also through my blog, has been uh, trying to improve the uh, the image of LARPing, uh, especially in the United States. In Europe, it's completely different, but in the U.S., uh, we we have a very negative uh, view of what LARPing actually is, and so Maybe you're um, kind of in Canada, probably yeah. not as harsh, but. Well, I've, I've, yeah, I've heard it's a little bit better in Canada, but I mean, I've never been, so I mean, I would hope it's better. That would just be good news. Um, but it's, uh, I, so I mean, that's my biggest thing, and it's, just, I mean, it's just kind of helping people, like, educate people about it and get people to at least try it. Because if you don't try it, how do you really know? So stop bashing stuff you don't know anything about. <laughs> mm-hmm. so. Like I, like I was, um, I'm not sure if. Anybody watching, hi viewers, watches my channel, but I did a video the first time I ever went LARPing. No one knows I what's watched up. it. I watched it. I watched, video. I watched but, both like, halves of it today. And yeah. Really? Oh, one part two. Thank you. But um, I was terrified, and like my one of my D and D groups made fun of me for wanting to go LARPing. I like got, that's yeah. how bad its reputation yeah. is. I got so mad when you said that. I was like. You I was mad too. Make fun of before, it's not okay to make fun of other people. Exactly. exactly. Like, what, what where, where did they, they had that Good Luck Charlie episode where Teddy went LARPing on a date, and everyone's like, <laughs> "What the heck?" I actually would love to go LARPing on a date. Oh my I know. Awesome. But our, our characters would have to have some kind yeah, of chemistry. I, anyway, I, like, I just imagine like a really bad cheesy line at the end of the night about him and Mana and some. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Do you accept physical roleplay? <laughs> <laughs> She gets it! I totally get it. I'm like... <laughs> anyway, I, I want to mention this. It's like, we're in the geek community. Like, we are... We are. Um, I don't want to say this, but we're the losers of the Tradition. world. Like, if we can't be accepted by you, who can we not be accepted by kind of right. thing? And I just like... Exactly. that. That's the part that really bothers me. But LARPing is amazing. And people yeah. should realize this. The, the biggest, like, the coolest thing about it, and you could you could play things that you never would play in real life, yeah. and it's like, so like, I could try out new things where I'm like, you know, I really I have a hard time doing this in real life. Maybe if I play a character, I can improve on that. Yeah. I mean, so there's a lot of like educational things around it that you can it can better you. It's not just yeah. like, and exactly. it's super social. Like it's even more social than like, being around yeah. a table, like with like, your like Dungeons my and Dragons friends. Like, oh my god, everyone there's gonna be like super awkward and have no social skill, Morgan. You're not right. gonna have any fun. Everyone there was like super chill and super cool, and, and like, it's awesome. When you think about it, it's like LARPing is one of those geeky activities that involves a lot of physical activity and getting out of the house and you know meeting people and talking to people. So in that way, like. People, like, I think yeah. people see LARP as like very extremely geeky, but you do a lot of stuff. No, it is. It's very I love it. Non traditionally <laughs> geeky, yeah. Yeah, I, and it, it incorporates would... a lot of things too. Like it's, mm-hmm. um, sorry, Don, but it's like I, it's I'm in a, costuming. I, it's... I, I got a bunch of women around me. I know what's gonna happen. Just keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call you out on that misogyny right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Nazi. That's all I got. I can't do anything. I just gotta call you. Out. <laughs> well, when I was saying, everyone's like, oh, God. Oh. Oh, um, I didn't do a feminist studies degree, so don't worry. <laughs> I don't have that much to back it up. I feel like everyone here is, like, a huge feminist, but Dawn is too, right? Oh. Oh, no, we lost her, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, uh, hopefully she gets back. No! She'll come I- back. I'll try She'll to get her back. back but Regenerate! <laughs> Regenerate, sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> please spawn, please. Resurrect! Mass revive! Mass revive! We need a resurrection oh. scroll, guys. <laughs> oh, what is my life? Okay, <sighs> okay so to, to your thing, I was going to say, I actually disagree that it's the most geeky or most nerdy thing possible because I feel like role-playing is something that's just innate in all of us. As human beings, even as kids, we play pretend and play dress-up. That's and, what... 
That's what LARPing is. It's playing dress up and pretend and beating the crap out of people with foam swords. Yeah. So I, so I, I don't see where that's the most oh, extreme geeky thing. If yeah. I think it's just as natural as, you know, when you happen to play a game and you're a hero character and you choose not yeah. to shoot a little kid in the head, you're like, well, I'm a hero character. If I was playing a rogue, it'd be different, you know? <laughs> Yeah, what I was meaning was it's more the perception of it. So, like, yeah. at least in, from the media and things like that that I've seen, it's, like, people think of it as super geeky. And, like, Mo, I, I know you you said your friend showed you the lightning bolt light, lightning bolt video. I it's, it's, But that, that's exactly how it looks from the outside. Like, it looks, and that's the thing is, like, yeah. Yeah, people don't can. <laughs> understand that it's not this thing with all these connotations that they believe it to be. Like, it's not the stereotype. So. And well, actually, if you're actually look up a trailer for a movie that's hopefully coming out soon called The Knights of Badass. Knights of Badass. Is that the one oh of the God. God. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's like it's almost other than the whole supernatural plot bit. It's like the most yeah. realistic yeah. Knights of Badass them. Yeah. Media portrayal of LARPing that I have seen so far. It's like, very please, good. Don't watch role models. It's not like role models. You know, there, there are elements of role models that I yeah. think, like, you can pull from and you're like, yeah, yeah. I mean, that could be somewhat realistic. The, the danger is that when people see that and they're like, all LARPers are like this. Yeah. And they put them in a box and they're like, <laughs> LARPers. No, yeah. no ladies, that, that's, that's some good looking guys. We were just I have, I have, Oh my yeah. god. Sorry. Lauren. Sorry. <laughs> Back. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're wearing we'll um, an overheated. <laughs> oh, no. So I'm on my iPad. I'm in a weird spot in my room right now. <laughs> Wait, you said your computer overheated? Yeah, it like um, I have a cooler. I have a fan for it, so just like it went over it overheated and it just went <laughs> and shut the entire thing off. Oh, it just no. died. So it's gonna be fine. She's she needs to cool down. The batteries to be out for a bit, but it my iPad's got to work for right now. <laughs> Come to Canada, and that will never happen. Really? <laughs> are you I both from Canada? Canada, right now. Canada, yeah, me and Jesse are from hey, Canada. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mo, what yeah. area are you in? Like, what province? I'll never tell. I'm in Toronto. <gasps> I mean, <you> too! <laughs> Woo! Toronto, buddy! Are you in your... Yeah, we should vlog right sometime. We should hang out and vlog sometime. I think we should. Do a yeah. Do you? Are you in university? or? Yes. What university do you go to? I'm going to be stalker now. You guys have like in the same class or something. Like you're. <laughs> I don't even know it. Like, just say the acronym and no one will know. Hmm? No. Just, just say the acronym. No one no! will know. No. Or just say. Uh, how about, how about you just I'll put it in the like chat? Okay, okay, just put yeah. it in the chat. Oh, so bro! not the world knows. How about that? Super secret. Oh, wait, I found out how to do that. Oh, people are already talking. Jeez. Okay, yes, uh, people have been talking. Okay. Uh. Okay. Do the thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. For I those know. of you at home, she just recently put a location. Now they're reacting to said location. Oh, oh my! Yeah, your campus is nice. There's a rivalry. Yeah, which I feel like any campus is nicer than mine. So really, you guys <laughs> cannot be friends. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. No, and the other thing, I know this is also off topic, but one of you, your birthday is April the sixth, and mine is April the third, and we're literally three days apart, <laughs> anyways. That's me. Yeah! So, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I was stalking all of you. Yeah. You were stalking all of us. Oh, yeah. oh my god, off topic. We should get back to yes, the I'm I'm sorry. cocktails. Yes, yes. Yep. okay, so as, as I was going to kind of put together this thing, I believe that role-playing and playing pretend is something that's natural as a child, and it's what we are brought up with. And then I wanted to ask about, well, what other, like, shows or fictional series <laughs> Uh, pivotal, excuse me, to your upbringing, because I know uh, we're, when I came over to America, for like guys, it was like Dragon Ball Z and Power Rangers, and for girls, it was like Pokemon and Sailor Moon. So I just wanted to know <laughs> if it was similar in Canada for you guys and whatnot. It's, pre it's pretty similar. Like Canada and America aren't as different as people think. Like a lot of the stereotypes are true. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! Your polite. blood is made of maple syrup. Yes. And our, our no, money my polar bear's in the garage right now, but... Go ahead. Does my igloo look nice? I redecorated. <laughs> it's yeah, my, nice. My, you guys earlier were talking about having pet dogs. I have a pet polar bear, but it's outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I live in Canada. No. All the coolest stuff. <laughs> it, it, it's literally cool. Ah! Literally. Ah! <laughs> I'm here all night trying to feel. I wish I could say I did that on purpose. It's I didn't. 
So TV I know. Show. Jesse, go. Jesse, TV show. Yes, huh. Lightning round. Go. <laughs> Lightning bolt. <laughs> I know for me growing up, I definitely did watch Pokemon and Digimon and Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon. Like, they were all kind of equal in my life. Like, it was never, like, Sailor Moon over Dragon Ball Z. I liked them both. Um, Sailor Moon was easier to play because all my friends watched it, so we could play. And I had a friend named Serena, so that was easy. I know. Oh. And she was blonde and, like, super tall. Um, but she was really smart. Was so she a meatball head? Fate. No. Um... But yeah, I think another one, I don't know for people in America, but we had Reboot growing up, and Reboot was <laughs> an amazing television show. I'm not sure if it affected me at all, but it definitely, I feel like it was the kind of show that really Im imbued me with a love of like more complex storytelling, because there it was, was like one of the first 3D animated kids TV shows, wasn't it? Yeah. And yeah. it's Canadian, and it's, they're doing like a, a reboot of Reboot. They're doing a reboot of Reboot. It's very meta. So excited. Um, but I know, like, that was one of the jumping off points for me where I started thinking, like, oh, there's more to storytelling than just good good, good person, bad person, right? Like, in Reboot, there's a lot of gray area, especially after Matrix comes in um, and he's going around the interwebs trying to find people. So, yeah. It's yeah. good. Yeah, it's good. Reboot is that you should watch it. Um, I, I, I watch a little bit of Sailor Moon, but it wasn't, like, my thing. I was, Dragon Ball Z was huge for me. Um, but Dragon Ball Z, let's not, not Dragon Ball GT, I had oh, crazy stuff. All right, oh talking, God. like, the good stuff, the real, you know. I, I, I treat it like Star Wars. It doesn't exist in my canon. There was no such yeah, thing as Super happen. Saiyan 4 in my canon. No. Um, so, I mean, I think that was a, that was a really big influence. Uh, and then, I mean, if we're talking, like, all cartoons, Rugrats. <gasps> yes! I love Rugrats. Yes. I mean, Nickelodeon. I mean, like, Nick, 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 Nickelodeon. I mean, like, all of those, like, classic, Hey Arnold and Ah, Real Monsters! <gasps> yes, and, All Real Monsters! Uh, uh, Angry Beavers and, and Invader Zim. Like, I mean, those all, like, just slap them all together and I hug them with joy. Just, do you remember Space Cases at all? No. Bill Strait was in it from Firefly. No, I didn't yeah. watch that one. Yeah. Uh, Blame me. <laughs> I remember because that was one of the big things from, that got me into sci fi, but she had this rainbow hair. And <gasps> I love this rainbow hair. Oh my god! Wait, what was it called? Space, Space cases? cases? Was it rainbow like? Yeah, it's like a rainbow. She had an invisible friend named Susie. You have no idea what this means to me. What has just happened to me? I've been trying to find out what that show is for the last fifteen years of my life. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and we were here to win this. I want to hug you right now, but it's gonna be like really weird. <laughs> oh, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I'm like freaking out. Rainbow hair girl. When I watched the show, I was like, Mom, I want to have rainbow hair too. And I've never done my hair, but that's not the point. Yeah, but then they got me because years later, I realized it was Kaylee from Firefly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's Canadian too, which is why I could never find it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you too? We have that problem a lot. <laughs> yeah. All, okay, so every show made in Canada is made in Quebec, or Vancouver if it's a, a voice dubbing. Mm -hmm. um, but Because it's cheaper to film stuff in it. Canada, isn't it? Like a lot of... Uh, American productions are actually just filmed here just because it's cheaper. Like Hannibal, which Hannibal. is right now. And I'm a huge Hannibal fangirl. So if anyone out there is a fan of Hannibal, hit me up. A fanibal? Yes, a fanibal. <laughs> um, and check out, check out my Hannibal fanibal <laughs> blog, tarannibals.tumblr.com. Ooh. Tumblr. Plug, plug, plug. I wish I had a plug <laughs> that I could just be like... <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one handy, unfortunately. <laughs> Unplug my computer. <laughs> plugs into a guitar amp. I don't know if that helps. But, uh. Close enough. Yeah. Okay, who's next? Lauren. Um, so space cases, that was one of the big ones. But I remember watching Sailor Moon when I was a kid and um, Rugrats too. Like I was a giant 90s child. I remember also Rocco's Modern Life. Oh, yes. Yes. Rocco's Modern yeah. Life. And you remember this, but me, I taught, I me, because whenever I think of like people that come to to have to do, 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 do I think of the otters or the beavers that would come in from the ambulance. 
they would come in from a beer and just go, oh, 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 oh. yes, oh, 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 oh. take them out, and I'm yes. like, oh, it gets but me, and I'm like, but it, it happened. <laughs> it was a thing. I forgot about that. Yeah. But I'm glad it's back in my life because you reminded me. <laughs> yes, yeah, Emma Rock is on my K. Arnold. Um, what other ones were there that I remember? I remember also Doug. I, I saw the Disney Channel, but I couldn't get it because we didn't get it with the cable package that we had. So when I was in the hospital getting chemo, I used to watch Disney Channel all the time. <laughs> we didn't get Disney Channel either, and I didn't get Nickelodeon. Yeah, so. like we don't. We had family. We have Family Channel. In we had YTV. Canada. We have YTV, which is where they air all like the cartoons and stuff, and then we have Family Channel, which is where they air like the more Disney stuff. Lizzie McGuire. Lizzie oh, McGuire. God, I remember Lizzie I remember McGuire. Lizzie. Yeah. Oh, oh, that movie was amazing. Mm-hmm. I was a little old. We're for going it. to the land where they invented spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and pizza, but not really. <laughs> I'm an Italian. They didn't, they didn't invent pizza. <laughs> Have you have you even made a dent in your reading list? I finished it. You read all sixteen books. I mean, I read the list. list. <laughs> I love how all my impressions are just me in a lower voice. We need to have, we need to have, guys. Let's just have like a teacher readers movie night. Let's do that, Lizzie McGuire. I like that idea. I don't I don't know where the real rest of you live, but you got to come to Toronto because yeah, you are already here. So we can't just do it over like Google Hangout. I think yeah, like I feel like we should we could like like. Stream it in one window. And oh talking I don't know. And we need to wear pajamas. <gasps> pajamas okay, to create a I, I, I think you just need to launch from another hangout right there. <laughs> we totally did. Right now, pajamas with popcorn. <laughs> you should have cocktails and we'll have the chikoritas and that'll be our Google Plus thing. I like it. We can have Pokemon themed snacks. This is like that episode of the guild. This is like uh, season balls. two. This is totally like season two right now. <laughs> You're just gonna have random guys come over to your place. You're like, I didn't invite these people. <laughs> Sorry. Stupid tall hot girl. But it's, yeah, stupid. Well, I guess in this case, stupid tall hot guy. But I need to move on to these topics. So. <laughs> please, please. I didn't I, get to go. Oh, no. oh God. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mo. Real quick. Thank you. Okay, real quick. Um, I was again like a huge anime person when I was younger, like Sailor Moon, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, blah, 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 blah. But mostly, I just watched Disney movies over and over again. Like, I was more of a movie person when I was a kid. Disney was the thing. Like, we had all the old ones, like, Snow White and, like, that era in my house, and I didn't realize how weird that was until I grew up. I'm like, wait a minute. I was, like, nowhere near where I was growing up. And my mom and dad were just like, yeah, we just wanted you to have that. (laughs) So that's what I grew up on. Okay, we're done. Yeah, Yay! <laughs> Disney! What, t- what ties all this together and moving into the next topic is because of I love these shows so much, I was naturally attracted more to people who are into these shows. And just by chance and fate, I would go on to date a girl for a long period of time who happened to be a Pokemon cosplayer and a Sailor Moon cosplayer. I was in 90s Kid Heaven at that moment. So oh. I wanted to talk. Go, Sorry. Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to have a quick tangent. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel, Fifty Shades of Fandom, and check out my daily December vlogs, you will see I have a video uploaded called "My Boyfriend Is Tuxedo Mask," which is the truth. That. Yeah, I, I saw that. That's Ooh, a, lucky duck. Uh, so I, I was gonna say that. Uh, I was gonna say, how how did you deal with like crushes and people you liked when you were, uh, not even when you're younger? How do you still deal with crushes and talking to people you're interested in? Badly. I ignore them until they go away. <laughs> go away. <laughs> I like you, Parch. <laughs> Holy water. <laughs> I treat them incessantly and say, look at this thing. I'm, I want to be a friend. Please don't hate my guts. Hey, I'm looking at you. Anyway. So uh, Jesse, who's going first? first. Any, any, any tips, any tactics? To dealing uh, with crushes. Yes. Just be confident, because like, I'm the kind of person I've like, I rarely, rarely rarely ever get a crush on anybody. Boy, some crushes on me. <laughs> but, um, like, when I do have a crush on somebody, I'll be like, I am confident that I like you and I want to kiss your lips with my lips. And I go up and I'm like, yo, date, me, now. And they're like, they're just so confused and so scared. They're just like, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> like, So confidence is the key because it'll freak them out so much they won't know what else to do. Like a Pokemon. Like a Pokemon. Except they're I don't I, I really hope they don't hurt themselves because that might yeah, be like, 
<laughs> you gotta you gotta punch him a little, and then you throw a pokeball, <laughs> and is that is that how it's terrible analogy? I'm sorry. Really and then basketball for this one. This then you song abusive. I can't condone. Yeah, that's that's kind of an abusive relationship. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna beat you down until you're very very weak, and I'm gonna no! entrap you. That's horrible. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can catch them in like a friend ball or like a, a luxury friend ball? ball. Nobody wants oh, to be caught in the friend ball. Like, trust me. Oh, oh no! Yeah. Oh no! Sorry, I didn't mean that. No, that's the worst I'm ball they've caught in. A after that, you're just like it's it's all it's years of flirtation with no nothing, nothing, just going nowhere. Yeah. Oh golly gee. Sorry. Oh, golly gee whiz. <laughs> I loved it. That was fantastic. No, that's that was how, a great joke. Friends on words. You don't realize until after it's happened. Get my banner off. <laughs> it's like uh, the whole time she's like, "I'm sorry, you're not my starter. Um, it's just not gonna happen." <laughs> you're my, you're the big. We just all Pokemon analogies, well, guys. You know, all, <laughs> all of them. The Pidgey in my heart. Or Rattata. No. I feel like you're the Bidoof. Like, I'll keep you around in, like, my PC and stuff, but I don't know, it's like, you'll always be with me, just I'm never going to have you in my party. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, 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 but a little away from the Pokemon <laughs> thing, like... like or Mail Combi. Or Mail Combi. Mail Combis. <laughs> Mail Combi. Right? That's why I put it so, in the song. Sorry. Sorry. So a little away from the Pokemon thing, and I want to get Lauren's uh, ideas on this. What, what do you what do you do then when there's somebody you like? Like, are you you the aggressor, or do you wait and be like, if I stand here long enough, they'll notice that they should like me. <laughs> I I don't get crushes a lot, so I just I tend to not deal with them. My friends are really good at trying to put me with people, in general. So I just I tend to just stay out of that area of my area of life in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I feel like our flirting is, like, different than normal totally. people flirting. Because, like, when I see somebody cute, I'm like, okay, I'm going to, like, sit in the same row as them as leg during lecture, and then oh God. maybe uh, I'll I, make eye contact. I, I don't know. I'm not ready for that. I have a great story about that. Hold up. <laughs> Jesse, did you want to go? I was just going to say, it's like you have a strategy, and then you execute your strength. Execute your strategy. <laughs> execute to the uh, I didn't mean that. You go, Chikorita. But um, <laughs> the slow bros and the geo dudes. <laughs> it's funny you should mention that because uh, I, I I'll try to make a long story short. Uh, I I kind of hit it off with this girl. We had a good time. Aww. Relationship doesn't work out. We're friends. So after the fact, you know, it's a couple of years later. We're talking. Uh, she's got a fiance, but we're all on, all on good terms. And I was making this joke about how, oh, I totally picked you up, and I I was so clever and cool when I picked you up. And she goes, uh, dude, I set you up the whole way. And I was like, what do you mean? She goes, because we were in lab together. She was like, I would take forever on my lab just to make sure we'd walk down the hall around the same time, and I would laugh extra loud at your jokes and sit in the same row so you would look towards me. And she's like, and the day you asked me out, I, I intentionally had nothing to do afterwards, so I was like, please let this guy ask me to lunch. And oh it changed my mind. I was like, oh, crap. She just, like, That's reeled so me really into that one. That's really cute. That's very so similar to what I did with my boyfriend. Yeah, <laughs> I planned it all. Well, I didn't plan that much, but I was like, okay, we're having like, because we lived in residence together in my first year of university, so I was like, okay, we're having like a house event. So I'm gonna like make sure he sits next to me, and like he, if we're eating food, we're gonna like eat together or whatever. And then it was like, yeah, magic, and it worked out. So success. That's <laughs> yeah, I'm, cute. I'm kind of on the opposite side. I'm really like an old-fashioned kind of person, so I, I have a hard time like, figuring all of that out, or, like, more like, well, if he asks me, that's cool. <laughs> I think you're the same way, Chris. You gotta, like, reel them in, girl. Like, they're the one that's gonna take the bait. Well, because I have, like, oh, yeah. I'm already Chris. so, like, I have a great personality, yeah, so if they so like me for that, that, then that's what matters. But how will they know you exist? If because you I'm... No, Beautiful. I'm no, 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 no. I, I, I agree with Kristen. I'm actually an old school guy as well, and that's the thing. Like, if if I'm interested in a person, I'll make the move. I'm usually, you know, because because I feel like if the woman makes the move, again, just my opinion. But but I feel like it's it's a little more uh, likely for me to like the person if I make the move because then it means I'm taking all this courage in and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna commit to this. Here we go, and I you know kind of jump. So Whereas it's an exercise in like self encouragement. 
Yeah, exactly. Can, and like girls, like, girls, we like that. We like to see you being confident and happy. And y you won't think it's our fault, but we're actually like we can control minds. I'm not okay. sure if you know about this, but we can control your actions. And if we want you to ask us out, you won't even know it's our fault. But we'll, we'll be like, like I said before, we'll be reeling you in without you even knowing it. And you'll, you're gonna think that it's like totally you. And we're like, yeah, they have confidence and they're happy now. But it was really like totally us. <laughs> And yeah. for the record, I was the one. Sorry. It's all the pheromones. We just kind of pull on people. It's chemicals, <laughs> it's science. Is that what we're saying now? It's weird it's science. science. Sorry, weird guys. <laughs> I, I just God, wanted to say, science. Um, for the record, I was the one who asked my boyfriend out. Woo! You go, girl. Said, and he's kind of a more quiet, like, he's a lot more introverted, and I'm a lot more extroverted, so I think with us it worked out, because he was like, I'm really happy you did that, because I would never, I kind of liked you, but I would never have asked you out. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, that works for me. But again, I think it depends on the personalities involved. Right. Definitely. Yeah. See, I had this horrible thing happen with me in college, where um, everyone thought I was, like, soins with this one guy, and they kept trying to put us together. But our freshman year, we were like, we were in the same class this entire year. Then he went to China, Oh. for a year, and we were like, okay, we'll still be friends, we'll email, whatever, he never emailed me back, I would email him a couple times, and then like, I just kind of stopped. Then, here's the, and wait, here's the kicker. So, he, we talk over the summer, after he gets back from China, and we're get, and we're starting to get closer, and then, finally, I, the first day back, my friend had moved into his house with him, and they were all in different rooms, but he was, like, but, but he was, um, but they were living in the same house. So, I was there, and he just goes, yeah, my girlfriend, and I was like, What? None of this, none of this thing came up during conversation. Like, come on, and then he go, and then he goes on and he's talking about this girl he met in New Zealand, met from New Zealand. I was in China with him, and it was that girl. And I was like, seriously? Oh my gosh! You know that kind of goes into this whole like right now. I feel like guys don't ask girls on dates anymore. It's one of those like you want to hang out, and then you're like, you're in this period where you're like. Are we dating? Are yeah. we? Can I go see another guy? Are we? Yes. That's what I call like are we friends. That, what no, are that's, we? That's what I call like a trap date. Cause I've had so many guys just be like, yeah, no, we're just totally gonna hang out at like snakes and lattes or whatever. This really cool place in Toronto. Uh, anyway, I love snakes, snakes and lattes. But anyway, it's like yeah, no, we're just gonna. Anyway. Oh my god, but like, oh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna hang out at, like, snicks and lattes, and also I'm bringing my friend and his girlfriend, but we're totally just hanging out, and then you get there, and he's, like, super nice, and he, like, pays the bill and stuff, and you're just sitting there, like, you're like, is this a date? And then you get worried that... It's totally a date, and you're like, yeah, there's no getting out, and you're like, you yeah. didn't see it coming. Yeah. And you get worried because it's like, do I have an obligation to act like this is a date now? Exactly! Right? Like, if you no. don't communicate what the actual engagement you're having is, it's like, is this a date or a hanging out? Because if yeah. it's if you're hanging out, he pays the stuff. You're like, exactly. well, now I feel like, I've gone to the like, I've gone to the bathroom sometimes, and I come back, and the bill is paid, and he's like, oh, yeah, I paid it. I'm like, I was not even here. It's really weird. I'm like, I don't it's know how to weird. react. Yeah. Well, here's the clincher to all of this, was, mm. so there was this long-distance relationship where he was back at school for his sophomore year, and she was still in New Zealand. They broke up six weeks later, and he comes running to me, like, I'm going to oh. make everything better. And I'm like, what a oh, no. Yes. For two oh. years, everyone was like, come on, you guys are perfect for each other. And I'm like, no, we're really not. You have a here. Yeah. Oh, my God, no. Uh, well, that, that so, no. A great yeah. way to transition into gear grinders, basically things that annoy us and piss us off. And I guess in your case, it's guys who pull that type of stunt. Well, that's one of them, then I got another one too, so... But, like, yeah, I think we can all, like, speak on this, like, when we just break up with a guy, or, like, wh like when people have just gotten out of a relationship, and immediately, like, boys just jump on the bandwagon. And I, like, when I broke up with my last guy friend, I went on Facebook, and there was, like five guys that, like, I never, ever talk to that are uh, just like, oh, yeah, hey, how's it going? Yeah, oh, and, like, I, the, the gross thing about that is that they don't talk to you on a regular basis, so you exactly. know, so you oh, know what's yeah. talking to you because they want to see you, and you're like, that's not attractive. Yeah. It's even, it's even worse when you're just getting out of a relationship, mm. but, like, it, like, that's the worst. But it also happens when, like, the guy just gets out of a relationship, and immediately he's just like, oh, hey, How's it go? You want to go get coffee sometime? And I'm like, I know what's up, man. I know no, what's up. It's gross, yeah. I know um, what you're trying to pull. 
-hmm. That's kind of the issue of Facebook and social media and stuff like that because it broadcasts when you're free. It's for a lot of guys, so if social media and Facebook is just a way to like keep relative contact with people who you might hook up with when they get single or when you're single. That's is that really what, what that is? is? I, I, <laughs> I don't know for I, I, every listen, guy. I, 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 feel, I feel no. I'm a little more cynical. Want. I'm yeah. a little more cynical, but I mean, I, I feel like there's so many like people you're not really contacts with, or like you wouldn't have their phone number, or you wouldn't hang out with them. But if conveniently they're out of a relationship and you're in, out of a relationship, you're like, well, well, here's a way to t start Dude, talking. To don't don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. I never. No. I'm not saying be that guy, but I'm don't just putting guy. you in the rationale of people. Yeah. But uh. I'm sure I, there I, are girls who do this too. I don't. I don't think it's necessarily. No, it's not a. It's not a female trait. It is a. All gender person, traits. People do that. It grinds my gears. A person trait. Grinds my gears. There we go. Um, How about Kristen or uh, Jesse? Any gear grinders of your own? Um, I hate the nice guy syndrome. <laughs> I thought about this before, but what is the I nice guy syndrome? Of, I'm a nice guy. So you should date me. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. right? Be, being nice is not a provocative, like... It's like, we I don't, don't like owe you anything for being a human yeah. being to us. Yeah. And then the other part of this is, it's not necessarily related, but I hate pickup artists and pickup artist culture. And this is, like, really in my mind right now. Mo, you might have heard about this. At one of the really big malls in Toronto, there's recently been a whole the bunch Asian of Center. pickup artists going to stand outside of, like, Forever 21 in stores where young <sighs> girls shop, and they just do their pickup routine either as practice or for real. And they're, they and apparently, like, the girls who recorded it, they're, like, they all said the exact same line, and they just stood there, and they wouldn't go away even when I was clearly uncomfortable when I told them I was uncomfortable. And That's I just think it's so gross. You don't so get gross. a girlfriend by using lines. Well, you get a girlfriend but by that's making not, friends but that's with not, a person. That's, I know, but that's that wasn't even trying to get a girlfriend. That was like... Yeah. They were treating the girls as if they were like some trophy cool. that they were trying to yeah. win and like beat out other guys. That's yeah. not cool. Exactly. And like, I there, there, are some, there are some funny pickup lines. Like, I've been really flattered by pickup lines, and the guys have been really nice after. And, like, they're a clever conversation starter. Like, it's not yeah. pickup lines I have an issue with. It's yeah, objectifying it's women in that yeah. way. Yeah. And I think it's the mindset, too. And, like, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. The idea that, like, I understand some people are really, they're socially awkward. They need to go out and practice talking to people so they yeah. can build up their confidence. That's because I'm socially awkward. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think you should use people to do that, especially oh. strangers. And I have a personal friend who's done this, and, like, that I'm not friends with him anymore. Because I'm like, how do you think this behavior is okay? It's not. To just go and say this stuff and creep people out. And you're not going to get better at socializing by doing this. Yeah. Know. No, you won't. My rant is over. <laughs> Oh, I'd say for this, me. Is not, this is not to discourage boys and girls from flirting with each yeah, other. Yeah, because doing the same yeah. shit right don't now. Don't do it in yeah. an objectifying manner. Yeah, it's we're, about we're respect. All people. Like, cool. don't put women on a pedestal. Don't put anybody on a pedestal. We're just people. If we're not you're that great friendly, guys. <laughs> we'll probably be friendly in return. And if you're friendly and someone isn't friendly back, maybe it just doesn't work out, right? It's okay. Well, you're well, not like, gonna flirt, flirt with the person. Don't flirt with their body. Exactly. All right. Exactly. Well. Uh, uh, I'll be devil's advocate for a couple of these things. Uh, the first thing, because we're talking about the nice guy uh, complex or <clears throat> the nice guy issue, is it, it takes a lot of courage to be... I mean, it's just, guys are, I think, are a lot more binary than women are. It's guys are a lot less gray area. We're either A or B, on or off. So I think we're scared of immediately going like, hey, I would like to have a relationship with you, because then you can immediately go, no. And that would just crush us. So, like the the, the nice be, the being nice thing is kind of there. In just I'm rationale what they are doing is hey this is a way that where I probably won't get immediately turned down and have my feelings hurt. And if something down the line happens, awesome. Now I I know why it's a bad thing. I've talked about the friend zone on another cocktails. It's when you stop and look at from the woman's perspective. Basically, you're coming into a relationship with a per person under false pretense. You're claiming to want to be a friend or claiming to just want to be in one place while secretly hoping that she's going to realize all these points I've accumulated over time and I've earned the right to be with her. It right. just doesn't work. Yeah. Okay, but let's, let's go back to that earn the right to be with her. Like, again, let's go back to the fact we're not 
some prize to be won. Exactly. Being in the friend zone does not mean you are not worthy of dating us. It just means that we don't feel we're compatible with you in that way. Yeah. And like the nice guy syndrome isn't a guy being really nice and being like, oh, we're it's not, not we're not meant to. It's not being a good guy. It's being, it's a, being nice a guy that's guy. like, hey, do you want to date me or whatever? And then she being like, no, and he'd be like, oh. Bitch. Like, no, that's not, it's like you're totally contradicting the nice guy thing. That's nice guy syndrome. Yeah. We love nice guys. Nice guys are the sweetest, and we I want always, them in our life. But I always term it as, like, the good guy or good person versus the nice guy. Like, a yeah. good person is a nice person, right? But they're not, they're not, they don't have all the connotations of, like, the nice guy. It's good to They're be only nice. doing, yeah. they're There's only nice because that. it's... Um, yeah. Well, no, here's the difference. It's the nice guy is the guy who is being nice because it benefits him, exactly. as opposed to the good Amen. guy who does it because it's the right thing to do. Exactly. All so, right. well, not, not to get all philosophical here, but how can we, like, in just from the sit, standing outside of the, the two-person relationship, a guy's doing a nice thing for you. How do you know if it's the nice guy syndrome or he's a good guy? Like, you can't really, like... Unless you immediately know his intentions, and you won't until he makes a move, and then you find out he's being either the nice guy or he's just a genuinely good guy. So it's that's kind just of, it. You, know, you won't know until he makes a move. You can tell. I think depending on the person. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, very. Sometimes it'll be like really creepy. Like you'll you'll like go and you'll be like, oh my god, yeah. you look like really hot today, and I'll just be like, ha ha. Jack. <laughs> it's the same. Like, yeah. I've I've like, had so many guys who just seem like genuinely nice people, and I'll be having like a good conversation with them, and we'll sit together during class, and we'll be like buddy buddy, and then he'll be like, hey, uh, so do you want to like get coffee sometime? Again, the trap day, and I'll be like, uh. No thanks, man. I'm not really looking for that right now. And then he'll just stop talking to me, and will yeah. never talk to me again because I am worthless to him now. And that's how you identify it. And the way I say is like, if you're ever, when you're trying to get into a relationship, and when you're in a relationship, even with friends or with significant others, communication. If you talk to each other, if you tell each other what you're thinking and what you're saying, it's kind of magical. You start to understand each other. <gasps> Who that, right? Is that why we ask them to tell us what they're thinking? <laughs> oh, oh, and I'm, I'm not gonna say like men are the only one at fault. Like everyone, ha like everyone needs to. Everyone does it. Make sure that they are saying what they want, right? Because I know mm -hmm. guys can often feel that women are being too vague. They're not like like if we're uncomfortable, we might not say I feel uncomfortable. We might just be like yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, right, so it's important right. to be clear about what you want and what you're looking for with mm -hmm. people. All right, and uh, I actually wanted to make a, a funny little joke about the thing about the pickup line things. I don't have any pickup lines, but I do have this one very terrible line where if I'm nervous and I don't know like how to start a conversation with a person, I come up to them and I say this. All right, so prepare yourself for a lot of cheesiness. You guys ready? I'm, I'm sitting down. I'm so right. excited. <laughs> Wait, I gotta make you big screen. Okay, go. All right, so. So, gentlemen, gentlemen out there, if you have a good sense of humor and you think the person you're about to uh, talk to is going to have a good sense of humor, open with this. You come up to them and go, uh, excuse me, do you know how much a polar bear weighs? Enough to break the ice. Hi, my name is Don. <laughs> now, if they laugh at that, run with it. You're like, I know, that's the worst <laughs> thing in the world. I'm glad we have the same sense of humor because I would never pull that with you, but I'm glad to see you smile. And, you know, but like something like that, that's like that's adorable. you don't have to say that because that's not <laughs> that's not that's not something like oh my god, uh, my magic watch says you're not wearing underwear. What? But I'm wearing underwear. Oh, it must be 15 minutes fast. Like that's creepy. Uh, but something like that, you could you could start that conversation with anyone. It doesn't even have to be flirting. You don't have to apologize for that. That's adorable. It's it like girl, my literature class said she'd actually marry the person that used that on her. Oh my god, really? Yeah. That's so cute. Aww. Because that was so adorable. <laughs> that kind of. Uh, sorry, I was. I was. It's kind of going into like my whole like what grinds my gears, and that's just like disrespect. Um, mm -hmm. and, I mean, it's kind of like you know, with that that pun well, didn't disrespect the person, mm -hmm. and I think that's just a general rule. Like, you know, if you're gonna do anything, are you respecting that person? Mm -hmm. And um, cause I, I just hate I hate seeing it happen to other people. I hate being this like the subject of disrespect, and I also hate it when I do it to somebody. And it's, I mean, it's just all around. Like I think if people just respected each other, the world would be better. <laughs> Relationships would be like, better. Like, like everything. Do, okay, but let's just do a little shout out here. I think we can all agree on this. Geek boys and nerd boys are the most polite men and most gentlemanly men yeah. that I have like that's why I love hanging out with you guys because you're so polite and you and you 
treat us ladies like people, and that's yes. really cool. So thank you. Uh, that's what, what matters. What can I say? What can I say? But, uh, <laughs> no, Although I mean, I've definitely met some geeky guys who do not do like they 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 try, and I appreciate the trying, but sometimes it's just like it's okay. You didn't have to say that thing that you just said. It's okay. Don't worry. I'm not judging you. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, but ultimately, gonna... we're just. I was gonna say, ultimately, we're just as nervous as everybody else is. You know, like mm -hmm. I, I, that line I said takes a lot of confidence. But I've also have other things where I'll be like, if I'm worried, like like a person's gonna turn me down, I'll pick like a specific spot. Like if we're on the the train together, or if it's class, I'll wait till like the exactly at the end of class to pay yeah, her a compliment yeah. or say hi. Because if she turns me down, then I don't have to like go back to my seat on the train and have everybody go, fuck, man, he just got. <laughs> Boy, you know, I, 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 I can just get off at my stop and be like, oh, bye. Huh. You know, or, yeah. or, the other, or the other thing for me is, and, you know, I guess this is my good guy thing or not a nice guy thing, is yeah. in those situations when it's, like, really uh, awkward or really social, like, you know, you're on a train, you're trying to go home, you really don't want to be bugged, I, I always like to, like, start just like, hey, hi, simple compliment, and then leave. So if I ever see you again, at least you know I exist. And if you're interested, you'd say probably, oh, hey, again. And that's the conversation starts. Yeah. Building relationships. Communication. I don't know what I mean about relationships. I haven't been in many, so you get you take the wheel, ladies. I've only had one. But a relationship there. isn't necessarily like dating. I mean it's yeah. just like friendship, knowing yeah. people. Human yeah. relationships. And like when we I think when we talk about the word crush, it's often with a person that either you see them in person a lot or you like have class with them kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Or it's a person on the internet. But you know, it's like you have you um, a lot, and I think it's a, a similar to just seeing your friends a lot, right? Like you just build a relationship in general with the people that you see and are around. And if you see like a really cool person, it's like I want to be friends with you. I don't like I'm not attracted to you, but I want to be your friend. So it's kind of a similar concept. So to, to get to some of the questions in the comments, Jens is asking, what makes a good compliment or good line then? What's a good way to start, like, hey, I'm interested in you. I would like to get to know you. Well, I Jesus, think... rule number one, do not call a girl hot or sexy. Call her beautiful or pretty because we we take hot and sexy, like, in a completely different tone. We we, we find that what, very what beautiful disrespectful. Be strong as well, though? Like, in beautiful my book, can beautiful be is... It, yeah, it's like kind of, you know... It can be sincere. Awkward. It's better than hot yeah. or sexy. Yeah. You don't even have to say, like, I think you like, are... You say, hey, I noticed this thing about you. Like, yeah. I just feel like, like hey, your eyes. Really nice today. Either, and then like, that that will make her feel happy. Just, and we are we are instinctively attracted to people who make us feel happy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, just, don't, I don't think you necessarily have to talk about physical stuff. Mm -hmm. Just be sincere with it, and like, don't make stuff up either. Be like, yeah. I mean, they're wearing something awful, and you're like, I like it. <laughs> I mean, just, like, it just. Like actually if you look at her and be like, point it out because we yeah. like. If you like it, and like if you are attracted to that person, there's probably a reason, right? Yeah. Like maybe you think she's smoking hot, but maybe there's something else. So you don't necessarily have to just say like, oh, this thing. Just think about why you're attracted to that person, and then build from that in a positive way. Like even even compliments that people get, like, oh my god, you study so hard, you're so smart, or oh my you god, you play that guitar too. like. Banging well, like that's that's not complimenting our bodies that we were born with. That's complimenting something that we worked hard for, and it's it, it it's almost I find I like am more flattered when somebody compliments something that I have worked hard for as a person and not something that I was just born with. Right. Yeah. Two two mm -hmm. things I want to say. One, Mo, I'm just imagining somebody coming up to you and go, "Damn, girl, you study hard." And I just imagine <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Secondly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but no, and that's also part of building the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. You're not going to immediately go up to someone and say, "You are really good at X, Y, Z." You're yeah. going to get to know the person. Exactly. So, and then after you get to know them, you'll be like, I didn't know you could play the ukulele. You're really good. Like, holy crap, I didn't know. That's a really cool thing to learn about you while right, we've been building a relationship. Yeah. Okay, so I, I kind of now want to bring it back to one of the other topics I want to talk about. It's kind of a big one because we've talked about uh, masculine and feminine, and I just wanted to know 
is there such a thing as a masculinity or femininity to you? Aside from just biology and what women can do that men can't do and vice versa, is there such a thing as an action being masculine or an action being feminine or acting manly or acting like a woman? Stereotypically, yes, but I feel mm -hmm. like the only, the only ideology that we have of what masculine should be and what feminine should be is from society. Like, I know a dude yeah. that could totally punch your face out and is in my mind, completely masculine, but sometimes he likes to wear lady clothes because he just feels more confident in that. And I'm like, yeah. you go, bro. Like, the, o the, only, the only way we know what a female is supposed to be and what a male is supposed to be is because someone has told us. Mm -hmm. You know? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I think there are certain things that girls are better at than guys and vice versa. I think that there are a lot of roles and things that we assign to genders that are hurtful in yeah. some ways. But there are there are roles I think that are not hurtful that are actually they actually empower us. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I think it's just it's recognizing a role that's not you know putting somebody down but helping to build each other because I think it, it's a partnership. Yeah. I mean there are obviously are differences. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, but it's figuring out, you know, what it is about the, the the woman brain versus the man brain that they can they they're both equal. They're always equal, but you know they they help each other to be better. <laughs> I'm a philosophical, serious person. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. And I, I think an important part about it is if you see like a guy who's doing something or acting in a way that you assume is feminine, that doesn't mean he is like something stereotypical or something that you're expecting. Don't judge a person just by what you what you think they're doing is feminine or masculine. Like for example, I know I keep talking about my boyfriend, but like he's a really good example of this because he's not, you know, he's not the typical example of a manly man. Like he's not crazy extroverted. He likes to cook. He's pretty domestic overall and I am the opposite. I don't like to cook. I don't like to do domestic stuff. My room's a mess. Um but like I don't see him as any less of a man because of it, right? So right, like exactly. Things, yeah. Yeah, you go, you go. <laughs> no, no, I, I was just agreeing. I'm agreeing no. with I, you. I want to say but... that men don't be a, don't think that we're gonna be more attracted to you if you are more stereotypically masculine. I had a you guy make me cheesecake once, and that was like, I he asked me out, and I was like, no, yeah, this cheesecake is the bomb. Like, <laughs> it's it's not yeah, turn down cheesecake. Or... Yeah, yeah. Lauren, so, I wanted, it was so uh, good. It was like peanut buttery. Oh, my God. I actually wanted Lauren to uh, get in on this. Then what are are, are there virtues then? Because as, as guys, we, we say like, oh, he's a man's man. Or that, that you know, we say man as, as a term of endearment, something we can look up to or respect. Is there such a term for women? That, can you you really go, say? girl. Chikorita. Like, yeah. Chikoritas. Um, but no, like even just going, you go, girl. Like that, even that's empowering in itself. I don't know. What do you think, Lauren? Lauren, I what do you think, I, Lauren? I have no idea. Like, I'm just thinking in terms of, like, I grew up in this house where gender roles are very defined. Like, my mom did the cooking, my dad was outside doing all the, do, I did all the plumbing and, like, all that kind of stuff. So, like, for me, growing up, it was hard for me to realize, like, you know, everyone wanted me to push me to be this, like, you know, this little girl just cooked and sewed and did all these, like, feminine things. Like, yeah. I think in the 50s you would do. And I do that. I also know I use a computer. I can fix things. I can <laughs> do all that stuff. So it's like they can't like really accept that sometimes mm -hmm. when it comes to me. Like, yeah, like... totally. Like when I was growing up, like I said, I liked like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh and blah blah blah. But my my parents would always like reward me for watching Sailor Moon, and like they always mob me these Barbies, and I'd always be like playing with Lego, and like they tried to mold me into something that they thought a woman should be kind of thing and I was just like oh. but we have to be careful because we can't say you know if, if a girl really likes all those things uh -huh. you know, yeah. we, we need to make sure we're also not putting her down for be, being exactly. like that or wanting to be that 1950s like housewife like there yeah. shouldn't be anything wrong with that I mean if you want to do like I mean now as I've gotten older like I've I've realized actually I do like to cook I like to bake when I was like 12 and 13 oh. I didn't want, want any part of it because I felt like you know Someone's like this is like putting like you know women back like you know, ten yeah, years uh, or whatever. Yeah, like I don't know if any of you have heard this quote. It applies to writing, uh, but it also applies to your life. Don't write strong woman. 
Right yes. interesting woman. White, right woman who don't need a man. Right woman who are desperate for a husband. Right woman who can cry. Right woman who show no emotion. Like, right? Women are people. They're not just women. Like, we don't have to be strong, buff, I'm going to wrestle anybody, I'm going to take on the world, the misogyny. We can also be, like, cute, frilly Lolita, princess. You're such a girl! But we can also be strong. Like, feminine does not mean anti-feminist. Exactly. Right. 100%. Yeah. I quote I like Alvin that. Wonderland. I like that a lot. Sure. And it goes the same way for men, and I think this is something in society that mm. is starting to get more attention, but it really yeah. isn't. Like, there's a lot of issues with how people perceive men and what is masculine and how guys should act, and it's really hard for guys, as for, in my experience, to talk about it because they just don't have, like, women, we've been trying to gain this footing for so long. We're women used have to having the support. A... Men don't. Exactly, and that, it's really sad because even with the guys in my life, they're like, I have issues, but I don't have anyone to talk to. I don't know who I can talk to about it. I I don't know how to talk about it. And so and I they're think living it's in a world where if they they're living in a world where if they like play baseball, for example, and they swing badly, they're like, you swing like a girl. Where do you go yeah. in a world like that for no crying in baseball? Well, um, exactly. I'll say I'll say this as you know, and it's kind of funny because the show is exactly that. This is a bunch of guys for, for the first nine episodes getting together and talking about these issues and being able to be open about it. Is I'll say this much. It might be more having to do with being a younger person and not having that confidence. The, this is actually a very young panel I have. The majority of the people I have on are older. So, uh, so you know, they've kind of, I guess, come into their, 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 role, their roles and who they are as adults. So to them, the term masculinity doesn't mean, you know, uh, lifting weights or doing uh, sports and being all rah-rah aggressive. It, every time I asked them to define what a man was, it came down to things like accepting responsibility, mm. uh, taking control of your life, be, being uh, honest or trustworthy or a person of your word being reliable, you know, never once did a physical attribute ever come up. Never once did a thing having to do with sports or recreation come up. So I think a part of that, we've talked back to, of course, masculinity, femininity being defined mm -hmm. by society. A part of that comes from just not being there with who you are as a person yet. You know, I'm a fantastic uh, fan of V-neck t-shirts, but V-neck t-shirts would make me seem like I was a little sugary to some people, if you know what I mean. I'm a fan of the V-neck shirt on some guys. Yeah, V-necks are cute on some depends guys. Depends on the guy. If you have the if you have the collarbone for it, it works. Uh, but uh, depends you know, on the gesture. Yeah, that's yeah, that too. <laughs> so, you know, it's just it's one of those things where where um I I think guys need to talk about it. I hope that mm -hmm. you can find okay. a bunch of friends you can have to talk about it. But it's just hard because you're not there yet, and it's still it's still you know socially um unacceptable to maybe be a little not stereotypically masculine. Mm -hmm. now, I've, uh, I've been told that your 20s, you think you know who you are, but you don't. <laughs> like, totally. It's not until you hit like, your 30s, you're like, yeah, all right, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now I kind of want to uh, just get into a fun game. We've, we've been on heavy topics, and I like this. Yeah. But, but, uh, okay. It's actually, it's, it's, cool, it, it, I, I, tr I tried this last episode, and it, it was a lot of fun. It's a play off the old game. It's uh, Mary... Kill and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say befriend because I'm not gonna say sleep with. <laughs> We're classy here. We're classy. So it's uh, kill, marry, or befriend. I'm gonna give you three characters or things, and you have to decide whether you're gonna kill them or marry them. You got it, right? Okay. 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 Yeah. I've never done. Are we each gonna get? Are we each gonna get our own characters, or do we all have to answer for the same? No, no. I'm gonna say three, and I okay. want you all to say what you would do, and I guess maybe argue or yeah. reason out why you picked your picks. All right. Okay. First three things. Are uh, Mario, Sonic the Hedgehog. Like, oh, let's go! That, Link. That Mario? Yes, yes, okay. the video game characters. Mario, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Link. I don't like any of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mario, no. Sonic, and Link. I was a PlayStation kid, not an N64 kid. Yeah, I would marry Link in a heartbeat. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, if out of the three, yeah, yeah I would be but Link. But Twilight Princess Link, Twilight Prin Princess Link. Let's get let's get that let's yeah. get that straight. Not like Twilight. Wind Waker Link. Wind Waker. <laughs> um, <laughs> what are the options again? Marry, kill. Marry, kill, kill be friends. Oh, I'd kill Sonic. Well, 
Because Mario can come fix your house, so it's good to be friends with him. What's Sonic going to do, like, run around and make a mess? Oh, that, he had yeah, an attitude problem, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's just, like, annoying. He was, like, Jesse, full I'm with of you. himself. I'm, I'm with you on Mario. I feel like he'd just hang out in my house and be like, way past cool. Like, I'd be like, screw you, Sonic. But, oh, like, no. he's got a good character design. Unless unless I can punch him and make money come out. <laughs> otherwise, no. <laughs> yeah. But it's limited, right? I'd be like, this is for Sonic 06. <laughs> and just, pow. And then I'd be friend awesome. Mario. Yeah, I think Mario would be What was your options, Lauren? Um, I would say I would be I'd be friend Mario. Um, Sonic, I would not even him running around. I'd probably end up killing him. <laughs> you, you get so annoyed, right? Uh, well, yeah. I've got well, I've got like crazy pit bull, so I don't need another thing running around like once <laughs> in my life. Um, and uh, I guess I'd Mario Lynx. <laughs> Right. I think Link would be okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was in a like you see the shield He's on my wall. I was I was in a musical um one time and Tyler, if you're watching this, uh, and there was a really cute guy playing Link. You're my friend, but <laughs> you are good looking, Tyler. Um, and I was Zelda, and we got to like put lips with our lips and <laughs> so many lips. So many lips. It was it was oh. it was fun. Mm. All right. So you guys ready for the next three? Yes. yes. Bring it. All right, let's go with another gender this time. Let's go with Lara Croft Tomb Raider, <laughs> Katniss from Hunger Games, <laughs> Hermione Granger. Oh! oh, oh I should be marrying Katniss, because, like, if we ever get stuck in a dystopian society, I'm good to go. And, I like, can't kill anyone! <laughs> Well, yeah, you couldn't kill Katniss even if you tried anyway. Katniss and Lara, like, how are you going to kill them? Like, you die. Even Hermione, she'd just be like... Yeah, all oh. three of them. Oh, Hermione would be a good free friend. I, I would be friend Hermione. I need yeah, decisions. Because, like, I already wanted to be her friend reading the books anyway. Yeah. And I knew she would be my friend. It was one of those, like, if we were in Hogwarts together, we'd be best buddies. <laughs> Can I go on a tangent? I have two questions I want to ask you guys. Right. Yeah. Uh, first of all, have you seen that little, it's on Tumblr, it's like a picture or a gif of, her. it's a drawing of Hermione, and it's like, there's a story about how when Hermione was a kid, she probably read Matilda, and it's like this girl who can move stuff with her mind, and then Hermione looks up and she can move stuff, and it was really cute. That was it. Oh. Google like Hermione and Matilda and see if you find right. it. The other oh. thing is, right. what have you Hold done... Have you done the Pottermore sorting quiz? And if you have, what house are you in? If you haven't, please go I do it right away. I have. I have. I have. I'm, I'm Slytherin. Slytherin. But Mer okay, so Merlin was also a Slytherin, and uh, BBC Merlin. I just my boyfriend's a Slytherin. It's okay. So Mo's a Slytherin. Yeah, it's okay to be a Slytherin. Yeah. No. I'm anyway, Slytherin. anyway, Mary killed. I'm yeah. Hufflepuff. The, the friend. I love it. We're all friends. <laughs> okay. All right. I still need decisions, ladies. I don't know. Okay, so Hermione is befriending. Mm hmm I So, do. now we got... Kat, okay, Katniss... Are you going to kill or marry her? <sighs> I would marry her. Um, Are you I would marry, marry, marry her. I would marry she's got, her. She's got a better attitude, I think, than Lara Croft. Yeah. She could feed me. I feel like <laughs> Lara Croft is what led into Katniss, right? Yeah. Like, Katniss is an inversion. Kind of. Yeah, so, sort of. I mean, one's got a gun. A bow and better arrow. clothes. Yeah. Well, the bow? <laughs> more we're more clothes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like actual protective clothing. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. Alright, so... I shouldn't have played uh, Tomb Raider so, like, recently, because I'm like, oh, what do I do? I just remembered... Whenever I played Tomb Raider, I did the thing where I set Lara on fire, and then I tried to put her in the pool and before she died, and it never oh, worked. I, like, kept blocking the guy in the meat closet, it's but I mean, like, oh, my God. But, like, I, I played, like, the new Tomb Raider recently. Oh, yeah. See, I oh, she was so cool in the new Tomb Raider, and I don't know what to pick. I'd befriend them all. <laughs> They're not all my friends. Uh, what can be in the game? We're all okay. Lauren, no, did you say yours yet? Um, I'd befriend Hermione, probably marry Katniss, and kill Lara. But Ooh. I'd probably die, so that's wow. a good point. <laughs> Interesting topic. <laughs> Why would you kill Lara? Just out of curiosity. I, I, Why I would... would... Go ahead. 
I've honestly, I have no connection to lore whatsoever. I think I tried to watch the movie once and I got interrupted. Oh, and don't even the watch movie. the movie. The movie's not worth it. Play the game. Yeah, I, play the game. I play the new one. Of video games. If you come to Toronto, I'll lend it to you. Okay, I actually could play Dragon Man. Game once. night. <laughs> be, be hey, your... do you guys have Steam? We should play a game together. Portal! Yeah. Oh, Portal to Call! Yeah. Let's play Portal to Call! Yeah. 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 Portal to Call! Yes! Yeah. Portal to call. yes. Yeah. How many people can play okay, Portal to Call? Like, only two people. Bring it down. Let's bring it down. Let's bring it down. We're almost there. We're almost home. Okay, okay Dad. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah one, one more set of these. Are right, you ready? Yes. Okay. So, you've got Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr. version. You've got Sherlock Holmes, Benedict Cumberbatch version. Don't do this you've to got me. Malcolm okay. Reynolds, Nathan Fillion. Oh, I'll like, tell you Malcolm right Reynolds. now what I would do. I'll tell you right now what I would do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here, here's here's the thing. No. I would probably marry Mal because I've got no. a, I've got a thing for space cowboys. No. I, I would have to um befriend Tony Stark because he's got a lot of money. Yes. And here's the thing. I, I always imagined this. I always imagined if I married Sherlock, because he's so harsh, I would like get out of bed one time and I like I tried to fit into my jeans and he's like, Oh, you've got a gut. And I'd be like, No, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I'm gonna have to kill Sherlock. Though I'm sure Tony would be an asshole anyway. I'm sure when I get old and my boobs sag, he'd be like find some twenty-year-old blonde anyway. But so that's me. I'm gonna marry Mal, befriend Tony, kill Sherlock. This is hard. I don't want to marry any of them. I yeah. have to say I'm I'm a kill Tony Stark because I I know that. Um, when Stan Lee created him, he got dared by his friends to create a comic book character that people shouldn't like. So that's the only reason. We all um, love him. Because of everything. But we shouldn't. <laughs> um, if, if I marry or befriend uh, Benedict Cumberdiddle, um, <laughs> would, would he in turn like, befriend and like have attraction to me? Mm. Yeah, is this a mutual thing? Okay, yes, it's so a he, mutual thing. He, he, here's kind of the thing. I, I've always read the, the old Arthur Conan Doyle uh, Sherlock, and to me, he was always kind of asexual. He didn't really care. I feel that way. Hundred percent. And 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 his relationship with Irene Adler. This is a small tangent. His relationship with Irene Adler is more of uh, admiration and respect. It's than really cool in the books. The original <laughs> yeah, story. It's awesome. Oh, good. Yeah, I, just I always felt through. it was more like a fascination type thing. Mm -hmm. well, I, I, like, I think how can there be someone who exists who's like me kind of, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's so impressed by her because he's like, shit, yeah. she's really smart too. And yeah. is that even a whole woman what thing? What if he wasn't? Because <laughs> I think it would be the most adorable thing in the world if I like woke up one morning and I was all like, and like Sherlock Benedict come back and just like, you look very nice today. And I'd be like, are you, are you like trying to get something from me? He's like, no. Oh! You just look very nice. And, I was like, and then he deduced like I can he tell. He deduced. That's like a fanfic. I can like, tell. Like, he like no. He like looks at me. He's like I can sense by your heart pulse that you need coffee. And like he'll go to the kitchen and, like bring me like tea or something. Dude, he would so know. Cool. Would that not be adorable? Okay. All right, all right Jesse, know, Kristen, come on, guys. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, those are my choices. All right. Um, I think that. Oh. Okay. I know T Tony Stark. I would not marry him. Like, that's very easy. Um, I wouldn't befriend him. I think I would kill him. And then I would I would befriend Sherlock and marry Malcolm. No. Yeah. yeah, this is hard. See, I, I... Okay, everyone on the internet is about to kill me. I haven't watched Firefly. So... <laughs> what? No! It's on Netflix. I'll give you my password. <laughs> okay. Um, but, so, like... But I love Nathan Fillion... Because he's awesome, um, so I think I'd end up marrying Mal just because it's Nathan Fillion, and he's a he's. If you ever see his Twitter, it's amazing. Um, yeah, it's fun. I, to I judge him. people's character based on their Twitter account. Do you watch <laughs> Castle? No, I don't. The only he makes uh, so many right sci-fi references. I know. I only like, only watch, like Firefly. Yeah, like I only watched Hannibal, and now I'm watching Sleepy Hollow, and that's basically it. I need to watch Sleepy Hollow. No spoilers. Hey, why no did you watch the mode Ichabod Crane? Because I was like, Ichabod Crane! Ichabod Crane! And I'm like, oh my god, that man! He said he'd never marry me because he. Anyway. Sorry. Anyway, so I'd marry the Nathan Fillion Mal guy, and then I'd probably kill Tony Stark, 
even though like I kind of love him, but I'm not supposed to. And then I'd be friends with I don't know. I want to be friends with Tony. I'd be friends with Tony. I'd kill Sherlock. He'd come back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. I'm sorry for the fangirling. I got really. Hey, Lauren, <laughs> Lauren, did you do yours yet? Um, I think I would marry Malcolm Reynolds. Um, Tony Stark. I don't know if I could put up with him for more than like a few days. So I'd probably kill him and be friends Sherlock. <laughs> All right. Very nice. That was yeah. a very fun game. And now we'll get to the last section of our show where we nominate our cocktastic man or woman. A cocktastic man or woman is somebody who we want to give a little bit of recognition to. Uh, I will begin uh, with somebody who I don't know directly, but recently Gal Gadot, Gadot was the uh, confirmed to be Wonder Woman in the up-and-coming Batman vs. Superman film. And the reason I'm nominating her is because... Well, not only is she a beautiful individual, and she's an actress, and she, I think, was Miss Israel and was also in the Israeli Defense Forces, but she's inherited a shitstorm of fanboys, especially asshole fanboys, who, uh, in their first reaction, said something along the lines of, oh, she's too skinny to play Wonder Woman. Now, it's hard enough being a woman and having them say, oh, you're too fat, but mm -hmm. now there's such things as being too skinny. It you play has Wonder no Woman? break. There is no break for women, it seems. Yeah. So I, I think, A, we shouldn't judge her like that. B, we should give her a freaking chance. I mean, th this movie isn't out for another year or so. So right. for her, I'm going to nominate her because I, I wish her all the best, and I love the character of Wonder Woman. I love a strong a female character, and I love her as a superhero. So Gal got it, uh, my cocktastic woman. However, w w both women and men can use that to our advantage, though, because once you realize that you will never, ever make everyone happy, hmm. it like you just you run out very, of crap to get. Yeah. yeah, that's very true, Mo. Mm -hmm. no, no fucks given anymore. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I hope, yeah, I really hope she is the movie successful and she's successful because I'm glad they're at least incorporated. Yeah. Yeah. And she's hot. She's so cute. Yeah. She's like gorgeous. I don't know. Can I nominate someone? Yeah, well, everybody has to nominate someone. That's oh, the okay. They oh. have to. It's mandatory. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yes, this is how the show goes. Oh. oh bomb. So go, Mo. Go. Oh, okay. Come on, uh, Mo. I want to nominate... Go, Mo. Uh, go, go, Mo, Mo. Um, go. I actually want to nominate a YouTuber called Venus Angelic, and she is freaking adorable, and she does makeup tutorials and regular vlogs and stuff. Um, she's very Lolita. She's very inspired by Japanese culture. But recently, she's been getting a lot of hate, mostly from Western viewers and commenters calling her, like, weird, and that's just not cool. And, like, did more research on her. This girl speaks, like, five languages, and she is so intelligent and so motivated and she just she has a love for all these cultures all over the world and I just think that she is getting too much hate and I did, I wanted to nominate her because I think she deserves a lot of recognition for how amazing she is. She's super cute. I just didn't she's, image her. No, you watch her? Oh my gosh, she's so cute. No, no, I just, I, because of you, like, I'm looking her up. And she's like, adorable. She's so cute. She's, uh, she's famous for looking like a living ballpoint doll, pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh All right, Lauren, Kristen, Jesse. Um, I've got one. I've been watching a lot of Law and Order, like the older Law and Order recently, SVU, and I really remembered how much I loved Casey Novak, who was played by Diane Neal. And I went and looked. I went and I did some research, and I found a podcast of Diane Neal, and she is the most hilarious woman ever. She used. She really once wanted to do comedy when she was on Law and Order, um, but this, but. Uh, just as a person, she is so hilarious. Her Twitter is, her Twitter is, the funniest thing ever, um, and her Vine videos are great. Um, but this woman has also done, also has also been through, been through so many things. She was talking in this podcast about how she'd been in a plane crash when she was 20 years old. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and um, she was a model then, and she was actually talking about how she was sit, how they used to sit her next to like all these like unaccompanied minors on planes. So. She has this playground with this kid who's like seven or eight, and the kid's like, "Are we gonna die?" And she's like, "Yeah, dude, hold my hand." Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. So Sorry, I only had eight years to live. Yeah, so oh she is God. my cocktastic um, woman right now because she is just so hilarious. That's that's so, pretty cocktastic. Yeah. And if you find her on Vine, she actually has one video that I love where she um answers the door to get a pizza 
and sprays the guy with, uh, I think, I don't know if it was maize or like soy straw. <laughs> what? <laughs> I wish I actually did. I think she just staged it. But oh I hope so. If you watch it, <laughs> I would, but poor guy. It, it's, she did it for the vine. Just yeah. a really quick irrelevant thing. Has anybody seen the video where peop- uh, these bunch of guys order pizza and they're all sitting around this table and have like these animal masks and they're like pretending to be this like cult during this ritual when this guy comes in with a pizza? No. <laughs> look it up. It's yeah, so, so funny. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, yeah. continue. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> but yes, um, I am Neil. <laughs> okay, I've got one. Uh, so Tamara Pierce is an author that I love. Um who, she's been writing since, like, the 80s, maybe even before that, but they're all, like, main characters, uh, like, the main characters are always, like, women, mostly, not always, but a lot of them are, and, like, some of the strongest, like, they were, like, my role models growing up, um, because they were, like, fantasy stories, but a girl who could talk to animals, and one girl who dresses up as a boy so she could become a knight, and um, I think if I hadn't read those books, um, I'd be a very different person. So um, I'm really I I love I love her and her works, and I'm so glad there are authors like that, and there are book series that girls can enjoy. Check it out. Uh, read them. I reread them a lot. They're easy to get through. So. <laughs> well, last but not least, Jesse. So I have actually a group of people. Um, so, like I, I mentioned earlier, right now I'm doing this thing called Daily December, which is a, a vlogging challenge where we vlog every day for all of December. Some people are also doing Vlogmas, which is like Christmas vlogging. Um, so I just want to shout out to a couple of those people. Um, so, trainer Jody, Jody Hall, which some of you guys know, uh, Jens, Jen Reineking, Mr. Graf and Roll, Necessary Nerddom, um, she's a girl, she's, she has a really cute dog named Gimli. Uh, Scotty Milagro or Peak Scotty, Becca Canote of Geek and Sundry, Kiri from Geek and Sundry, Neil from Geek and Sundry is also doing it. And Neil, if you if you ever see this, I'm really sorry for bothering you all the time. Uh, um, <laughs> my friend Justin from your Random is doing it, and Shane Frondell, who's been really nice to me on Twitter and has been helping me with stuff. Um, so yeah, they're all daily December vloggers, and where I'm gonna do a, hang- a Google Hangout of my own around New Year's Eve, either on the 31st in the morning or on the 1st or 2nd of January in the afternoon. And it's going to be a hangout with the Daily December vloggers, and we're going to discuss like how we felt about the vlogging, like how it's changed us, what we've learned, if we're going to keep doing it, things like that. So it's going to be really fun. Stay tuned to my Twitter if you want to find out more details. And if you want to be in it, like it send me a message. Really no, okay, uh, is it too late to do that? It's the 7th. I haven't. No. no I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, go ahead. People, I'm like, doing it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're doing it, too. I forgot. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, I'm not much of a vlogger. Let's not go there. But, yeah, I'm doing a not-so-daily oh. December when I randomly update. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, I want to thank my ladies for making this a fantastic show. You're all cocktastic to me. <laughs> and, uh, thank you, guys. And, and thank you to all the people. <laughs> thank you to all the people in the chat who've been commenting along with us and having a good time. And as I always say to you at home, have a great day, but remember, be a man. And in this case, be a woman. <laughs> or be whatever you want. That works too. <laughs> 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 <laughs>